Hey guys, V here. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you a really exciting product from Razer that just released not too long ago. I believe it was like a month ago or so. So it's the Razer Chroma addressable RGB controller. So the reason this is really exciting for me specifically is because I really enjoy addressable RGBs. Uh, for example, the Lian Lee Strimmer Plus cables, those are addressable RGBs, which means you can control the RGBs individually. All the fans are addressable RGBs. The fans in that PC over there, all addressable RGBs. So what that means is now with this product, we can use Razer Chroma to control all of our addressable RGBs, which includes addressable RGB strips, addressable RGB fans, anything that has addressable RGB. So a great example is a lot of people were asking how I can control the Lian Lee cables uh, without the controller or uh, through a specific software. Can you control it with Corsair? Can you control it with Razer? Stuff like that. So I've had questions like that. And in today's video, I will be answering that with this specifically. And the reason, the other reason this is really cool, it's not your typical controller that just plugs into your motherboard and then you use your motherboard software. So what this does is enables you to use Razer Chroma for all your addressable RGBs. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this and I'm gonna make this all into one video. So it's gonna be an install video and a how-to video as far as how to use it. And I'm gonna demo it for you so you can see each individual fan being controlled by this controller through Razer Chroma. And I will put timestamps down below to where the install starts and where this starts and all that. So if you're interested in that, check that out. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and get into this install. So first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and shut the PC down. Once the PC shuts down, you're gonna wanna turn off the power supply and unplug it completely. And then what I like to do to discharge any electricity going through it, press the power button for a few seconds or a couple times, whatever you want. And now we're ready to get started. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this product. The cool thing about this is it has four little screw holes, which means you can uh, screw this into your uh, SATA drives and stuff like that. So that's really cool. You also got sticky tape that you can use instead of connecting into the SATA drive, or you can just shove it underneath somewhere. Anyways, the other thing that's in here is the cables. So you got one cable that goes from your USB 2.0 port on your motherboard to the controller. And then the other cable is the power cable. And it's quite unfortunate that they went with a Molex connector I'm not a huge fan of Molex connections, but it is what it is. All right, so the first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is turn this thing around. Now, let's go ahead and take the back off. It's a bit of a mess in here. I didn't get a chance to clean up the wires yet, but that's okay. At least the back fits, right? <laughs> so, now what we're gonna wanna do is take the USB 2.0 cable and it has a micro USB on the other side, which plugs into the bottom of this controller. So take this cable, you're gonna to wanna to turn this back around and take a look on the inside and we're gonna find this USB 2.0 port on our motherboard. Your motherboard might be a little different, but it will look exactly the same. So on this motherboard specifically, it is right there at the bottom, those two ports. And basically we're gonna take that cable I just showed you with the USB 2.0 port and we're gonna plug that into one of those ports and then run the other side to the back. Okay, so these plugs there, there's one little pin missing. So you can't really plug it in wrong. Just figure out which way those are facing and then take your cable and hopefully you can see it lined up there and just push it in and that's plugged in. Now take the other side and put it in the back. And now the rest of the work, we're gonna go to the back and plug everything in. All right, now you got this cable over here, you can pull it, 
It's the one that is a micro USB. So basically that just plugs into the bottom of the controller. So pretty simple. Bam, that's plugged in. And now we need to do the power. Now I mentioned earlier, the power cable is a Molex connector, as you see here. So basically the little circular part goes into the bottom as well. And then this plugs into your Molex connector off of your power supply. Now, if you have a modular design power supply, which means that you plug in all your cables yourself, then you would need to find your Molex. Some of them are attached to the SATA ports. Some of them are, uh, it just, it varies very much from power supply to power supply. So keep that in mind, but you will need a Molex connector. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this into my power supply and use this. But if you don't have Molex connectors or anything like that, and you only have SATA connections, which I do have here, and these look like this. It's like a little L shape. Anyways, now you can get an adapter that goes from SATA to Molex. So if you don't have Molex, dedicated Molex connectors for your power supply, you can buy them on Amazon. I will link one or two or a few down in the description in case you need one that goes from SATA to that. And that would be a lot more convenient than having to have this whole bundle of joy for one thing because they decided to go Molex. So Razer, if you're watching this, change this to SATA, please. I mean, come on, we're nearly in 2021 or 2022.0, never know. All right, let's move on. All right, so I got the Molex connection plugged into my power supply. So all you gotta do now is take the Molex connector off of the controller and plug it in here. And these kinda plug in pretty badly, which is why I hate these. All right, that's plugged in. Again, you might have a little bit of trouble. You might not, it might go in right away. So got that plugged in. Now, at this point, uh, you can mount it somewhere or you can wait to mount it until after you figure out how long your cables are and stuff like that. But as I was saying earlier, it does have those four screws, which means you can use these standard SATA um, trays to mount them. But I'm not going to mount it yet because I don't know how far I can run these cables. So I'm going to go ahead and do this now. All right, guys. So I got all of my addressable RGBs unplugged from my motherboard. So addressable RGBs are the ones with only three pins. So it's two pins skipped by one and then another pin. You cannot plug four pin into this. You'll be able to plug it in, but it could fry this. It could fry other components. Don't do that. Addressable RGBs only. So I have five addressable RGB fans in this PC. This can plug up to six addressable RGBs, three on either side. Now there's one way really that you can plug this in. You can't really do it wrong. And basically you put it in there and connect it and uh you get the point so i'm not gonna go ahead and show you every single fan so one quick thing to note you can actually have two of these connected to your pc if you have more than six devices that you want to plug in so that is fully plugged in that is ready to turn on so now i'm going to go ahead and take you into the software stuff I'm going to show you how to install the software and how to set it up and we'll go from there. All right. So we're going to have to go ahead and download Razer Synapse 3. So just I'll put the link in the description. Click download. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and open it up. So we're going to go ahead and click show all. What you're going to need is Chroma Studio. And if you want, you can 
select other ones, that's really up to you. I'm going to go ahead and install Chroma Connect and Chroma Studio. So then just go ahead and click install. This might take a little while, so just sit back and relax. All right, now it's installed. I have this checkmarked launch Razer Synapse. Go ahead and click get started. And now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to control everything. All right, so once you have Synapse installed, you will see your device right here. Now, I did have a few issues with detecting this. So the thing that worked for me is if you have this issue, if not skip forward, I went into settings about and I checked for updates and there was an update. So that's that. But that's because I already had it installed. So that's a whole nother story. If you already had Synapse installed and it did not detect, check for an update. So yeah, that's what worked for me. Then I was able to detect it and everything worked. If you have any other issues, let me know down in the comments. Um, hopefully you don't have any issues, but you know, that's just how it goes. All right, so once you have this open to set it up, you're gonna wanna click on that device. Now, port number two is the fan in the front bottom, and that supposedly has 20 LEDs. I have not messed with that yet. That's just the automatic detection, and so far it's looking fine. Same thing with port three, that's the top fan in the front. And now we get to this side with my other fans, and these fans are a bit tricky and I could not get them perfect. So there are 16 RGBs on the outer ring, but there's only eight on the inner ring, and there's no way to detect them individually. And you can't just uh, go, you know, 24. It doesn't work that way. If you don't have this type of setup with the outer ring and the, and the inner ring and all of that, then you won't have this problem. So set it up how you need to, count the LEDs if you need to, and go from there. The detection might work, it might not. Anyways, when you open it up, it's gonna have all of them on LED strip, switch it to fan, and then set the LEDs. And then, basically when you change anything, it's going to tell you right here, the device layout has been changed. So you can click on that, or you can go to lighting, and you can do quick effects to change all the effects at once, or you can do advanced effects and click on Chroma Studio. So now we're in here, I already set it up the way I wanted it. So the Leon Lee cable currently is right here, whatever. So you can move it around. I moved, you know, this fan here, this one here, and I kind of did it by the numbers as you can see. So this is front bottom, front top, top, other top, or rear top, and then the rear fan. So, okay, so to move them, you just click this button here, and you just move them wherever you want. So I'm gonna leave mine right there, it's fine. Um, so you can do this a couple ways. It's, there's a lot of customization. There's no way I'm gonna go through this in this video. But I'm gonna show you a couple things. So here is my first effect that I have, right? Which is on there. So if you select this button here, you can select all the RGBs, all the LEDs, whatever you want to light up, right? So I have the RGB strip. Technically, it's the Lian Lee strip and the front logo. Anyways, this is the setup here on the right. I have the color set to this one right here, which is, it just basically selects the rainbow and the speed at 10 currently, and I did a split. Split just means that it's going from the inside and going out. Now you can do from the outside going in, all you gotta do is change the angle. So that's real quick tutorial on that. Now, for the fans, all right, so let's select this front bottom, right? So we select that. We're gonna go ahead and change this front bottom and then we're gonna do this front top one. So keep an eye on those. So here in the software, just select whichever one of these you want, right? So let's just do static, okay. So I set a static one. You can double click and change it, let's say fan one, 
which is the bottom. Got it. So anyways, that is a static color. So go ahead and pick your static color, whatever you want. We'll start with red. So now once you click save, that's going to be red. There it is. Hopefully you can see that in the video, but it is red. Now to do all your fans in different colors, this is where it gets kind of cool. So go ahead and add another static. And again, you can rename it. I'm not going to do that to save time, but you can rename it to fan two or whatever. Now go ahead and select, or you can select half of them or whatever. You can select each individual. You know what I mean? So anyways, bam, select them all. Let's go yellow. So we're just going to do like a rainbow theme all around. Save that and bam, that one's yellow. So now we got red, yellow, and next we're going to do like a, like a greenish, blue, and then maybe pink or something. All right. So we're going to go ahead and do the same exact thing, static, or you can select any of these. It doesn't have to be just static. I'm just showing you the basics. So I'm going to go ahead and select a, like a greenish, whatever it is and click save. Now that's going to turn green. Bam. There we go. Looks cool. Again, static. We're just going to select that and let's do a bam blue. Let's do a blue. So now that's going to turn blue. And then again, for the final one, I'm just going to show you just one uh, random one. So let's go and do wheel. I'm going to show you that you can do a whole nother one. So bam, select that. We're going to do red to yellow. Got it. Save that. And now you can see that is changing color. So that's doing its own thing. These are all doing their own thing. You can set them up any wild way that you want. The Leanne Lee Strimmer, actually, that's a really cool effect that you can get in this because uh, I can't do that through motherboard software and I can't do that through their software. So that's really cool. Really liking, I'm really digging that setup. And of course, if you had the other one, this one plugged into another one of the headers on the controller, then you can also change the other one to whatever color you want. So now that you know how to set it up and everything, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you've been here long enough, you know that I absolutely love RGB. So I had to share this product with you guys. This is a very cool uh, product. I, I really appreciate Razer putting something out like this that allows you to just connect any fan in a Corsair style to their uh, product. Now they do have specific products that would work best with this. So if you want to invest in that, that's another option too. You can buy something that's certified and the RGBs will link up perfectly with this. I didn't go that route. I just kind of did my own thing with my own fans and my own products, just like many of you might do. And that's what I wanted to show you. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much for the support and I will see you in the next one. Peace.